Coming up on Murray News 8, information on the Koberger alibi filing and a family's response. In WSU announced athletic budget cuts. Murrow News 8 starts now. From the Northwest Public Broadcasting Studios on the campus of Washington State University, this is Murrow News 8. Hello, I'm Jose. And I'm Sadie Risen. We start with some breaking news at the top of the program. WSU President Kirk Schultz has announced his retirement in June of 2025. This was announced this morning at the Board of Regents meeting in Spokane. In a video posted online, Schultz gave insight on his plans for WSU before he officially steps down. Today I'd like to share some news. After extensive discussion with the Board of Regents, I've decided to retire as WSU President starting in June of 2025. As I look over the transition year ahead of me, I wanna focus on really four things. The first is I wanna support the board and the community and the search for my successor. Secondly, I wanna make sure we're stabilizing enrollment across the system. Third, I wanna make sure that we continue to work with our donors and raise that money that we need to to help advance Washington State now and into the future. Finally, I wanna make sure that we get a great home for Cougar Athletics moving forward. Kirk Schultz started his presidential career in March of 2016. His plan is to remain in Washington and support his successor as they seek to lead WSU to greater heights in the years to come. A new survey is showing faculty upset at WSU. The WSU chapter of the American Association of University professors has listed the findings from their survey. The top four issues the survey found was income inequality between administrative and faculty salaries, lack of budget transparency, campus climate and morale, and faculty salaries and benefits. This survey was sent out just after hundreds of WSU faculty called for a leadership change at WSU. 250 faculties responded to the survey. There are new updates in the Brian Koberger case. The defense team has submitted Koberger's alibi for the night of the murders. Koberger is claiming that he was out for a drive near Wawai County Park which is about 30 miles away from the house where the students were murdered. The defense team also plans to have a cell phone tower data expert to prove Koberger's claim of being away from the crime scene. But not everyone is happy with the new information. The family of the victim, Kaylee Gonzalez, has released a statement saying that they are unhappy with how long it took to give this information. Quote, we believe that of, that of this alibi had anything, any weight, it would have been submitted months ago. Before this alibi was released, the Lataw County prosecuting attorney in court motioned in order of stopping the defense from contacting potential jurors about the case without getting permission from the court. This decision comes after the defense called around 400 Lataw County residents asking questions about the case. After careful consideration this past week of whether this broke the gag order or not, the courts came to their decision yesterday. WSU Athletics has announced the budget cut for the next year, and it turns out it will be cut significantly. In the drafted 2025 budget, the athletic department has $74.5 million for the 2025 year, which is $11.2 million less than this year. WSU Athletics CFO told the Board of Regents that these budget cuts will result in some staff being let go up to a 12% reduction in team operational budgets, a restructure of contracts, and getting rid of one-time expenses that were unique to 2024. In a document sent out by the WSU Regents, these budget cuts come partly from the $27.5 million revenue in media rights and a decline in people buying tickets for the upcoming football season both of those problems being attributed to the collapse of the Pac-12. The WSU regents say they will talk about the athletic budget during their meeting in Spokane that started yesterday and that just finalized today. I don't think it's good. I think a big appeal of the school is athletics and not being in a power five and just kind of killer. I feel like it just draws less students, also makes us less competitive. So. In general, it's kind of a downward trend that's just going to spiral and snowball for a while, I feel like. So with the 
less budget, uh, there will be less coaches that we're allowed to attract to the school, um, which could lead to a downfall of the athletics. I mean, it's obviously kind of a, it's a big deal. I mean, I think the whole conference moving is just kind of screwing the school. Uh, a lot of the students and the athletics, it just, it's kind of a, a net negative. Uh, it doesn't really benefit anyone. It kind of takes away opportunities from everyone. I just don't think it's good. A finalist has pulled out of potentially being the new provost here at the WSU. No names have been released on who the finalist may be. The new hiree will be replacing Dr. Elizabeth Chilton, who is stepping down as WSU's current Pullman Chancellor. A 20-year-old man was sentenced on Wednesday in Latah County District Court. Danny Dills pleaded guilty to felony unlawful sale of wildlife when he illegally used hunting dogs to take a cougar south of Amida. Dills then sold the cougar in Moscow for $300. Judge John Judge sentenced Dills to three years of probation and fined him $600. On Wednesday night around 10.30 p.m., there was a man walking around Greek Row with a crossbow. He was walking up to houses on Greek Row and standing on the porches. Police officers responded to calls of someone walking on Greek Row with a bow and arrow, and officers determined he had no arrows on him. An 18-year-old has been arrested for allegedly leading local Washington State Patrol troopers on a dangerous high-speed car chase in a stolen pickup. The incident started on US I-95 near Steptoe Wednesday morning when a trooper tried to stop the driver for going 107 miles per hour. The driver did not stop resulting in troopers to stop the chase because it did not qualify as a legal pursuit under Washington law. A different trooper tried to pull over the same driver a few minutes later north of Pullman on State Route 27. The driver was going 120 miles per hour during the second chase, but that chase was also discontinued. The stolen pickup was then found abandoned on Whelan Road. The pickup was reportedly stolen out of Lewiston, Idaho. Controlled burns are being conducted in North Latow County near Harvard starting today. The U.S. Forest Service will be burning slash north of town and east of State Highway 6. Up to 200 acres near La Laird Park might be burned depending on the weather. Burning will last a few days. Heads up, construction uh, in Moscow will affect Moscow drivers. There will be traffic impacts this spring for the construction of a new segment of U.S. Highway 95 south of Moscow. A two-mile work zone near Reisenar Hill has a reduced speed of 35 miles an hour. The work will include lane closure and drivers can expect delays. In early May, Eid Road will be closed and restricted to local traffic only. The closure will run for 10 weeks. Traffic issues are expected to end in mid-May. The annual free and public event, Vandal Science Days, is happening right now. Our reporter, Sedona Turner, is out there. Is, how's it looking, Sedona? Yes, I'm standing here outside of the Integrative Research Center here at the University of Idaho where their College of Sciences is hosting Vandal Science Day for the next two days from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. The entire public is encouraged to come on out. All ages are encouraged to come on out. There's a ton of fun activities to do, and if you do decide to come out, the things you can do, you can do fossil digging along with comet making. And also, if you look over here, there's Idaho under the rocks, or Idaho rocks under the microscope. So you can come and look through the microscope, see the different kind of rocks. It's a super cool experience. Also, the geology club is here, so you can talk to them. There's a lot of fun people to talk to, a lot of fun activities. So it should be a super fun event to come on out to. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Sedona. A well-known show host is coming to WSU on Sunday. And a peek at where downtown construction is in the six month long progress, coming up after the break. Dad, they took over my bedroom. Come on, come on. Okay, Dad, one, two, Three. Ah! Dad! You saved me. Dad? 
Are you okay? I'm fine, dear. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. There. <laughs> Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. <laughs> Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? Because he was a fun guy. <laughs> what do you call a pig that knows karate? Pork chop. <laughs> Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because the players kept dribbling all over it. <laughs> Can I tell you another one? Um, so, how does a tissue dance? Put a little boogie on it. What's Beethoven's favorite fruit? Banana. -na. <laughs> Uh, what is a boxer's favorite drink? Fruit punch. <laughs> Adam Savage from Mythbusters will be in Pullman this weekend to host a free Earth Day event. The event Savage will be hosting will be on Sunday in Beasley Coliseum with doors opening at 6.30. This event will be free to the public. With Earth Day happening on Monday, the Pullman and Moscow communities will be hosting multiple events this weekend. Here is a couple of events you can look out for. Inland North Waste will be hosting an event in the East City Park in Moscow today from 4 to 7. Live music and free food will be available. College Hill will be hosting a Pizza for the Planet event happening at Ruby Street Park until 4 today. On Saturday, the Biology Graduate Student Association will be hosting an event at the Bear Center from 9 a.m. to noon in the Palouse Cons Conservation District will be hosting a stream cleanup from 9 to 11 a.m. This Saturday is the last Pullman Pullman's Farmer's Market for the year. The Pullman Summer Market will not be happening this year, but the organizers are hoping to bring it back for the summer of 2025. So be sure to check out the ones this weekend. It is happening at the WSU Brisford Visitor Center from 10 to 2. Our reporter Sedona Turner went to downtown Maine to give a quick update on what construction looks like. the downtown stuff and they've taken almost all of the landscaping off so all of the trees and stuff off the side and they've also ripped out all of the asphalt behind me this past week. A new Murrow College class is offered due to Professor Tracy Simmons. Our reporter Morgan White has more. The Religion Reporting Project is Professor Tracy Simmons' self-proclaimed passion project. Originally, it was an extracurricular program offered to WC students. This semester is the first, but students could register for it as a one-credit course. I asked Simmons what she wanted students to gain from the class. I would love for all the students to become religion reporters, but realistically, I'm happy if students just open their minds and learn to understand other cultures and other traditions and learn how to talk to people uh, in a respectful, curious way. The project consists of visiting different places of worship. One of the outings for the class consisted of staying the night at the Stravasti Abbey. Simmons has had a long-standing relationship with the Abbey for 11 years as a reporter. I talked to Venerable Tukton Juni about her connection to Simmons. I really rely on Tracy when we have a story that needs to be told. She's the first reporter I call. The relationship the Abbey has had with journalists hasn't always been founded on mutual respect, and there has been some negative experiences with the media, especially when the Abbey had one of their monks, Yeshi Chodrak, go missing. He was later found dead. Despite this, the Abbey is always welcoming to anyone who wants to learn more about them. Venerable Choni said this. We love having guests. Um, we really like to share what we're doing. Buddhism, as I said in the talk yesterday, the the principal thing is Buddha himself said, don't take my word for any of this. Check it out, use what's useful, and if it's not so useful, fine. 
Um, and so that's our attitude too in sharing what we have here. Murrow students are at Srivasti Abbey learning more about Buddhism. I asked them what they thought of their experience. My biggest takeaway is how dangerous anger can be. One big thing that they talked about there was compassion um, and they were really trying to get us to be thankful and thoughtful about the things that we have, where they come from, and our kindness affecting others. For Murrow News 8, I'm Morgan White. A historical building was bought by a Colfax couple. What they are doing with it, coming up. And we'll tell you about three more events happening this weekend after the break. Days, months, hey, I'm Jim from across the street. Years, I'd like to give you this. a lifetime can rush by without realizing what we're missing. But it doesn't have to be that way. We have a choice to take action. Visit maketheconnection.net to find out more. Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. <laughs> Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? Because he was a fun guy. <laughs> what do you call a pig that knows karate? Pork chop. Uh, 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 uh. Um, so how does a tissue dance? Put a little buggy on it. <laughs> Colfax couple bought the old Whitman County Hospital, intending to restore the historic, historic building. This, as you can imagine, cost a pretty penny. Our reporter Maggie Tolson has more. When Austin and Laura Storm first saw St. Ignatius, it was clear that the building needed help. And as soon as we saw it, we were just struck by how, um, how beautiful it was, but also how run down it was. What was once Whitman County Hospital, St. Ignatius has been the host of many ghost hunters searching for the paranormal. An idea that came from former Colfax Chamber of Commerce Executive Director Val Gregory. It was just a brilliant idea. She had seen it done in other places to help raise awareness of historic buildings and, and draw attention to them. Um, and it worked beyond, beyond what she could have imagined. St. Ignatius's haunted reputation even grabbed the attention of TV shows and YouTubers such as Ghost Adventures and Ghost Files. A lot of people have had paranormal supernatural experiences in the building um, and I don't have any reason to discount those experiences. I haven't had a lot of experiences myself. I had one experience that was pretty wild and I couldn't couldn't explain it but I've always felt like the building has a really like a calm energy um, and I think if there is something supernatural going on that the ghosts recognize like the intent of what we're trying to do and 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 uh, seem to approve of us trying to preserve the building. Haunted or not, St. Ignatius's reputation has created the financial support needed to preserve this part of the Palouse's history. People have been incredibly supportive, um, and I think people have recognized our desire to like honor the history, but also honor the building and the community. And so one of the best experiences we've had is just how uh, incredibly supportive people have had. Reporting in Colfax, this is Maggie Tolson, Murrow News 8. Tomorrow, the Whitman County Humane Society is hosting a kitten shower in their office from 12 to 5. 
The society is hoping to get a bunch of resources that are needed at the moment. For those that donate, finger sandwiches and wildflower punch will be served. Tomorrow is the 27th annual Pullman Family Fair. The walk and roll is tomorrow from 1 to 4 p.m. at Pullman City Playfields. The event is free and people can meet local service providers, play, play, ugh, play games, get free stuff, and explore the playfields and get a better look inside a fire truck or police car. Sweet, <laughs> Sweet Munity is celebrating. It's okay. Well, Sweet Munity, if you know where it is in Pullman, is celebrating their 12th birthday this weekend with free cupcakes. I know I'm going to go get a cupcake. It's one per person tomorrow at the shop, and pretty much it's, it's a super exciting thing. But I know there's a lot of events coming up this weekend. How's the weather looking for us, Lana? Yeah, the weather is. Yeah, the weather is looking really good. I've brought Taylor Swift in to point to, us, to it today since it is the release of the Tortured Poets Department. So there is a lot of events this week, so the weather is gonna be pretty nice. Today, it's very sunny, but it does feel kind of chilly outside. So we've got a high of 58 and a low of 33. It is kind of windy, so you'll just watch out for that for the rest of the day. So be prepared for the cold. Thank you, Taylor, for that. And tomorrow, it is going to be a lot warmer with a high of 66 and a low of 37. I know there's a track and field event tomorrow, so if I were you, I would get outside and go to that since that probably will be one of the nicer days this week. It is gonna be very sunny. I'll probably go outside, go for a run, maybe listen to more of Taylor Swift's new album. Across the state, it is looking a lot like Pullman. Over on the west side, they're getting sun. It is a lot warmer everywhere else though, so that they are very lucky. On the west side, they're in the high 60s. They're getting close to those 70 degree temperatures, as you can see. Moving to the cent center of the state, it's pretty similar. So it's those mid to high 60s. So very, very warm. They're gonna have very nice weather and it is typically very nice like over there compared to Pullman. Spokane and Pullman are pretty similar. As you can see, they um, are in the 50s still. So we're not reaching those 60 temperatures quite yet, but hopefully later in this week, we will see that. So for the rest of the week, as you can see tomorrow, again, very nice day. I would get outside and go for a walk, hang out. If you wanna go see track and field, that is tomorrow. So I would definitely indulge in that. Sunday, it's gonna be a little bit chillier. As you can see, the sun is still continuing on, so we're not getting any more rain or snow, luckily, but it will still be kind of chilly, so make sure you just wear your sweatshirts and stuff. And then Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, it is gonna be cold. Monday, there is gonna be a bit of wind, so do be prepared for that. It is gonna be kind of chilly, but just be ready for that for the rest of the week. And then Wednesday, it's getting nicer again, so back to you guys at the desk. Two WSU home game sporting events are being held today. Find out when and where after the break. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kiss them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. So I just moved in with his family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. 
I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Washington State University football kicker D. Janikowski is hosting his annual Kicking Cancer fundraiser in Pullman tonight. Money raised benefits the Heather Janikowski Foundation in honor of his mother who passed away from cancer. The fundraiser includes a live and silent auction and a bowling tournament. The event is from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. tonight at Zeppos in Pullman. Washington State Tennis concludes its 2024 regular season when it hosts the Washington Huskies today at the WCU Outdoor Tennis Courts for Senior Day. The match is part of the Boeing Apple Cup Series. Fans attending this match will be treated to free snacks and bottled water. S Senior Day ceremonies start at 1.15 and first serve is at 1.30 p.m. Washington State University is rowing Rowing's only home race of the season has been moved up a day in the afternoon. Today in the afternoon, due to high expected winds tomorrow, the program made a decision to move it up for safety precautions. The Cougar crew will race Gonzaga at Wawai, landing west of Pullman on the Snake River. After after the break, our sports reporter Gunnar Miller will let you in on a football even this weekend. You're looking at me in the future, okay. Hi, Isaac. Hi. Wait a second. Do you know who I am? Julia. This is Jaina. It's the future. I just wanted to talk to you about what happened with those two girls. Oh, yeah. Do you remember it was this girl that I was getting bullied by that one day at PE when they were like yelling at me and then you just linked arms with me. I don't think you know how much like that helped me because like I finally like knew that I had somebody. Because of you Isaac and what you did for me years ago, I grew up to be more independent and love myself and just be a little bit more confident. Oh, <laughs> I'm like a little tearing up right now. Just to see her in the future just to blossom and look beautiful and that was really amazing what to expect when you're expecting a teenager hey guys today we're talking about how to wake up your teen and this works literally every time give kisses Give kisses. Look. Give kisses. Give kisses. You heard how loud that was. I know. I heard. That. I heard. It, 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 it wasn't you. Yeah. It was the. Is that bacon? You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Bacon. Bacon. Football is having their last practice scrimmage this Saturday before their spree game next Saturday. I know I'll be working, but I hope you guys can make it. Yeah. I'll be in there. Well, that was Murrow News 8. If you missed any of our previous shows, you can watch them on our YouTube channel. Later. <laughs>